Hello, everyone, and welcome. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. I am back for another creative kickoff. This time we're doing Photoshop as usual on Wednesdays. And uh, kickoffs are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, usually at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon my time, depending on where you are in the world. I'm on the East Coast. All right, so this morning I did one, or this afternoon for me, I did one, and it had all kinds of issues from the streaming side. Demo side was fine. So uh, I decided to go ahead and just redo it. So therefore you guys get the benefit of today's creative kickoff, even though it might be a little late in your day and you'll use it for tomorrow's kickoff. All right, so without further ado, today we're gonna be using um, a little bit of Lightroom, but lots of Photoshop to do removing distractions. And first we're gonna talk about distractions. It was kind of funny that I, I gave the whole spiel about what distractions are and they kind of take your attention away from the subject. And uh, someone pointed out they got this, like you said, like a line coming down your head. And so, yeah, those are called mergers and, and we have those as well. And so that's what we're gonna start off with is getting rid of the mergers in my particular background. Uh, but then uh, we're, I have lots of examples, some of which you might have seen before if you followed me, but I like to use the new tools on how to get rid of those distractions uh, in new ways. So even if it's an image you've seen before, we'll use some new ways to get rid of those distractions. All right, so without further ado, let's go to the desktop. And on my desktop, I see Lightroom Classic. And in Lightroom Classic, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Photoshop, actually. I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop because remember, we're gonna talk about getting rid of that those mergers behind my head. So I've gone ahead and taken, a, those are by the way on a separate layer already. So I've just gone ahead and taken the opportunity to select those using the rectangular marquee selection. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them because they're not part of the sky anyway. Now I see where I messed up on the selection here at the top. So one of the things you can do is you can use your history brush. You can undo and redo it with a better selection, but you can also use the history brush to kind of just brush in and that's kind of undo on a brush. So where I kind of like a little carried away with the selection, I can just undo those and get rid of them there. All right, so, and if I didn't get rid of them good enough, I can also use the remove tool to remove, I see a little element of one there. I'll let go, let that one go. And I see a little one there as well. We'll let that one go too. Oh, hang on. Again, because I'm on that layer, it might just be easier to do select and delete. Because it's trying to bring in, when I do that remove tool, it's trying to bring in surrounding pixels. And that's what I don't need in this case. Let's just make a selection there. Zoom in and do a good job. I'm just doing it quick here to kind of get this out of the way. And let's see if this works. Yep, that worked fine. All right, so sometimes it's the simple methods that work best. So now we'll go ahead and save that. And I don't know, you may see it update behind me in real time the next time I go back since I did update the actual live graphic. All right, so now we'll head back to uh, Lightroom Classic and we'll talk about some distractions here that, uh, like I said, I, this is my distraction collection. So I know I've used these images before, but let's go ahead and dive right into this photo. And now this isn't a huge distraction, but I can see a piece of equipment. It looks like a softbox on the floor there uh, from when this photo was taken. And again, I could simply crop up because there's enough floor space to do that. And I probably would just crop it also to give me a chance to make it a four by five aspect ratio. But if you want to keep your aspect ratio and you want to keep this, I'm in Lightroom Classic. You can do this in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom. If I head over to the develop module in Lightroom Classic or the editing in, um, in Lightroom, then I'll have the opportunity to use the new remove feature. So it always had a clone, well not always, but it ha for years it had a heal and a clone option, and now it actually has a remove brush as well. So I can take the remove brush and just go ahead and it kind of outlines it to show you what's gonna be removed. Now I know this should work well because there's nothing else around it but the yellow. So when it analyzes that and picks that back up, yep, that worked great because there was nothing else that it could pull in by accident. It was all yellow. So that was a good one to do. However, if I go to this next one, in this next one, uh, the problem with this particular one is that uh, the, the soft box is coming in over her head 
and it's really close to her. Like it's really close to her fingers, really close to her hair, so forth and so on. So if I start using the same method here to do this, and I usually do an outline first and then fill it in. Uh, if I do that same method here, I don't think it's gonna work as well. I could be surprised, but I'm gonna let it go and see what I get this time. And that's what I expected. It started pulling in, because it didn't, it didn't know where it could go. So I started pulling in her hair in the upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just undo that one. And uh, this is a case where I could try and keep brushing it, but I think it's just easier for me to go ahead and take this one into Photoshop and see if I can uh, get it to work better there. All right, so let's uh, let's just go back in my edits here. And what I'll do is I will go in and uh, just step back in time for this one. So if we go to the history, I can go back to uh, all the settings are reset from where it was last pulled in. And this is the one I probably want, that one. Yes, no, any of these should be good. All right, we'll use that one. All right, so let's go to that one. And now we'll use Command E and we'll open that up in Photoshop. So Photoshop can be opened up from Lightroom Classic with Command E or Control E on Windows. And in, um, in your uh, Lightroom, it would be Command Shift E. So it's an additional shift key to do it. So let's see if I can get this one open. And just want to make sure I'm doing this right. Whoa, 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 there we go. Edit in Photoshop, and we'll give it a second to do that. Looks like it's working. There we go. All right, so now we're in Photoshop with that image, and it's pulling that image from my NAS, so that's why it takes a few seconds to do these now in this particular example. Um, but here we are, we're in this particular uh, image, and there's our, our, uh, our big softbox there, Shadow. And I can use a variety of tools. So when something's not working for you in Lightroom, that's when it's time to think about going over to Photoshop. And it's because Photoshop has a dozen ways to remove this, whereas Lightroom may have two or three. So it's just, if something works in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, great. Consider yourself fortunate that it was simple enough to use those tools to do it. If it's a little bit more complex, that's when you head over to Photoshop because Photoshop has more options, more, more tools to do it. Now, Photoshop has a brand new remove tool as well, and this one is AI based. And if I make my brush a little bit bigger here in Photoshop, I can just go ahead and now I'm gonna get, instead of an outline, I'm gonna get a purple kind of a pinkish purple out or overlay. And now, and even though it's the same shadow, same still close to her hair, because it uses AI, it's a little smarter in figuring out what it should do. So it did leave a little bit, but that's okay. We just go ahead and say, nope, you left some, go ahead and take that out. And it's a much better distraction removal. So with that said, um, you can certainly go in and try and do it in multiple passes in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. But sometimes it's just easier to do it quicker and probably better with less stress than to just go ahead and do it right there in Photoshop and know that it's going to do a better job. All right, so that's one. Uh, let's go to another one here. Uh, I like this example because this example is kind of one of those where it's, uh, it's, it's hiding something that's in the image. So in this case, oh, sorry, I hit the mouse button there. In this case, it's... Uh, hiding this license plate so this is a it's not necessarily a distraction but sometimes it's kind of a privacy thing and it really is a distraction because if you're supposed to be looking at the car i guarantee the first thing you looked at was the license plate because you wanted to read the letters and numbers see where it was from read that text down there at the bottom so forth and so on because that's what our eye went to was the most different or not, I won't say interesting, but the most different thing about this. We knew it was a car, but our eye went immediately to the license plate. So uh, I'm not even gonna try and do that one in, in Lightroom because I know that it's not gonna be easy to try and do that in Lightroom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try and do that one right in Photoshop. All right, so let's see if we got that one open yet. Hold on. 
again it's pulling these from my network so it might take a few seconds longer oh there we are. and then doing it locally and there it is and then by the way every time i attempted to do the other one it did open it, it was just taking longer than i was waiting for all right so that's why three versions of the other one are open next time i'll be a little more patient all right so now i'm going to grab my um uh, my quick selection tool and in my quick selection tool i'm just going to go ahead and select this whole area not the license plate the whole well of the license plate where the license plate would go so now i'm also going to go ahead and create a new layer and i'm going to fill that new layer with the color of that well so now notice the well is kind of indented that's why it's got a shadow around it i'm going to go ahead and grab my eyedropper just hit the letter i on the keyboard that'll grab the eyedropper and then i'll just sample that color that's uh there so now that becomes my new foreground color down here in the lower left hand corner now we've got the foreground color and we're on a new layer, I can just go ahead and so comfortably hit my uh, option delete or PC alt backspace and that will fill it with that color. And then I can deselect. So now that I've deselected, basically all I've done is put that on its own layer, that color. Now, you could maybe get away with this as the, the background, but we kind of know that looks kind of fake because it wouldn't be flush with the with the rest of the car. It kind of needs that shadow to look real. So we could go in and we could uh, go to our effects down here below the lower layers panel and we can use inner shadow. And with inner shadow, right off the bat, it already looks better, but let me bring over the inner shadow controls. Here they are. And let's see if we can make it even look better yet. So I'm gonna bring the size of this, make it down, there we go and maybe bring the distance of it out and we can just play around with the and make it nice and opaque actually i may not need to do that let's bring it back this might work the way it is if i just make it darker yeah there we go that's starting to look good all right and you just by the way if you if you have a problem getting the angle right because you can't you want to try and match the angle of the shadow uh, to the light or where the light's coming from. If you having a problem guessing what that looks like, remember when you're in the layer style panel, you can pick up what you're trying to do and just move it around. So if I get out of this panel and just come over here, I can move it around. I can get it exactly where I want it to be. And that way I'm not guessing, trying to guess the distance and the angle and get that just where I want it to be. I can drag it to where it looks good. And that's where that's where I think it looks good. So now that literally looks like it's indented. If you wanted to go for go even a little bit more into this, you might add another uh, effect where you darken it a little bit, so that so it looks more natural. Like it it wouldn't be so bright. It wouldn't be as bright as the rest of the car because it's kind of inside. So you might go in and add a uh, a levels adjustment or even an ex. Brightness, contrast, yeah, exposure. You can do exposure level or brightness and contrast. Uh, let's try exposure. And we'll drop down the expose. Oh, hold on. It's doing it for the whole thing. So I'm going to hold down my option or alt key until it confine that clicking between the layer here. I've now uh, confined that to, oh, that's what that little arrow means. I made it a clipping mask to only apply to the layer right below instead of the whole image. So now when I darken it, or brighten it it's only happening to that particular area so let me undo that so you can see what I did I kind of did it uh, instinctively so I added my layer mask or I'm sorry I added my um, my exposure uh, adjustment layer and my exposure adjustment layer by default is adjusting everything down so what I want is to only adjust the next layer down not everything not the whole car so if I, I'll zoom in so you can see me do it I just put my finger between the two layers, between the adjustment layer and between the regular layer and hold down my option or alt key. And as soon as I hold down my option or alt key, I get the clipping um, option. So as soon as I click, it's now clipping that adjustment just to the layer below. And so now when I come up here to the controls and I make my adjustment, I'm making it just to that layer below. Okay, so that becomes that particular uh, adjustment and distraction removal. And now we can we look at the car because there is no license plate to draw us away from the car. So that's starting to get the idea of what distractions are. Uh, I'll give you another example just a before and after. 
Uh, here's one where I took an image of a, a car in a, in a charging spot, a, a parking area. And, and the minute I got home, I couldn't help for, for, but look at all the little pieces of trash and cement and powder and whatever, all the little oil stain that's right here and lower dirt or whatever. Just you, you start looking at every little thing. There's some garbage bags over there on the ground looking at every little thing that doesn't belong there. So I took the time and cleaned up. The car was fine. I cleaned up the parking lot because I don't want people looking at the parking lot and all the clutter around the parking lot. If something's clean, your eye is going to immediately go to the thing that we should be looking at. If something's dirty, we're going to go there. We're going to look at all the dirt and all the stuff. So, Distractions are anything that takes the person's attention away from your subject, what they should be looking at. All right, so now let's go on to another one. Um, this is kind of one I've used a million times. I've shown this one before over and over and over again. It's a shot I took years ago in, at Red Rock Canyon in, in Vegas, and I had the model up there, and I had the light right up there with her. And, and it worked great, but of course the light's there, it's visible. And I've shown over the years a million ways to get rid of that light. And now we can go in and use, uh, let's do Command E. And we'll give it a second to open. There, see, we, if we wait, it does do it. Uh, we'll give it a second to open from the network, and there it is. And uh, instead of me using all the other ways I've done it before, now I'm going to use that new AI base remove tool. And I want to show you something in the remove tool, kind of a feature here. And that is, by default, the remove tool is set to remove after each stroke. I'm going to turn that off for this. Because what that's going to let me do is change my brush size and do this all at once. So I have a big brush now to do this part. Great. But that brush would be too big to do the, to do the, um, the pole here. So I'm going to bring my brush size down. And you notice I, I let go. I'm not holding down the mouse anymore. I let go because it's not going to do it until I click OK now. So it's not doing it after each stroke. It's only doing when you confirm that you're done painting in all the areas that you want it to remove. So I can click. I can let go. I can re relax. I can get just the areas I want. And then I can adjust my brush size to be bigger again. And then I can get all of this. And I can get it all painted in, all dialed in, before I say, that's it, I'm done. And now I'm done. So now I'll go ahead and click the, uh, the confirmation, the checkbox. And boom, the remove tool does an amazing job. Better than anything I've used on this in the past. And that's another thing I like is using the same image. Because I get to see the progression of the technology. I get to see how much better it does in one time versus maybe the last time I used um, the patch tool or the healing brush. And it took three or four times to get it to get it all gone. Now it's doing it in one. So we just keep getting better and better and better at these tools that do this stuff. Okay, let's see. We got time for a couple more before we end this particular um, broadcast. All right, let's go here. Here's another example of distractions. So you, you see the person here working at the desk. But then you can't help but be distracted by all the little fingerprints on the back of the laptop. And if there were dust on the table or anything like that, and there may be some stuff in the background here that is, is, is looks like a lamp above her head or something above her head. So all of those are little bitty distractions that people are, their eye, people's eyes are going to wander away from your subject because they got other things to look at and things that you probably don't want them looking at. So this remove tool has been working great for me so far. And we can go ahead and turn it back on to do it um, after each stroke. So now I've turned that back on. If I go ahead and start removing these uh, fingerprints and marks off the back of the laptop, and I'm gonna, not going to do them all because I don't have time, but you get the idea. We just clean up that laptop and kind of get all the distractions away from it. If there's stuff on the table, I can't tell if that's on the table or my display. I think it's on my display. All right. You would zoom in and do a good job. And then whatever that is, it's shallow depth of field. I can't tell, but it is. Our eye goes to the brightest thing in the photo. So my eye was going to whatever. And whatever this is above her head, another merger like the lines above my head. 
There we go. We just kind of that looks like another lamp in the room or something like that. And we just get rid of all of those things that could draw a person's attention away from the subject. And you, you know, it, it's up to you how much you do. So if you think any of this is a distraction, by all means, take it out because that's not doing a great job taking that out. Um, yeah, so this is a case where the remove tool is not cutting it. So I'll switch to another tool. I'll make a selection. Now I can use the lasso. I just grab the patch tool about, you know, because it was quicker. Uh, I could try and patch it out. That might work. Or I can do a uh, generative fill. So we'll do generative fill. We'll generate. And we'll see if generative fill gives us, it removes it or tries to add in another couch. <laughs> we'll see what we get. And it did okay. I would think the first one was the better one. All right, that's good. And while we're at it, we'll use another generative fill here. I don't even know what that is, but it's it could be a distraction. And a lot of distractions are, they can't tell what it is. That's why they're looking at it. It's looking at it to try and figure out what it is in the scene. So it could be a dead tree. It could be uh, an animal in the background. It could be anything in the background that's causing people to say, what's that? And the more they're concentrating on what's that, the more they're not looking at your photo and your subject. All right, so we got uh, we got all of those out. And uh, again, I can get in tighter a little bit around her hair and kind of remove some more of that. There looks like a little bit of a halo there left over, but you get the idea. So the halo is now my distraction because I went straight to that. Um, but just removing things that are gonna cause people to look away from your subject and look at other things that you that they shouldn't be looking at, that they shouldn't be wasting time on. Here's another one here, my friend Tony. This all looked great until I zoomed in and realized uh, the tag on his uh, tie was visible. So there it is, nice and nice. And you can read it and you can see it's polyester, blah, 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 machine wash. And that's what people will do. They'll start reading it to figure out what it is, where where is it from, what's the brand, so forth. And so on. Again, none of that has to do with the subject. None of that's important, and none of that is something anyone should be paying attention to. So we'll uh, we'll open up a copy of Tony instead of the original. So Lightroom will produce a copy for us and open it up in Photoshop. And we'll give it a second to do that. And let's see if it did it yet. Coming. I don't want to do it again because I know it will do it twice. There we go. See it? Just wait for it. All right. So there we go. We'll zoom in. And now this is one of those where, again, last time I did this, I used the patch tool. Let's see if we can get away with a remove tool this time. Patch tool will work, but it took a lot of work because it, it has a sharp edge here. So I'm going to try and do it along this edge. And I missed part of it. Let's go back. Get all of that. All of that. And I think we're good. Let go. And like magic, that's gone. And no one would ever notice it now. No one would ever notice that tag. Now, again, a distraction could be his hair now. He could be looking at those few little strands of wispy hair and say, hey, how come you didn't tell him to put, you know, push his hair down when you took the photo? Because I didn't notice it when I took the photo. <laughs> so otherwise I would have, because then I wouldn't be doing this now. So uh, that's another thing from our photographers watching. If you can do it in the camera, that means do it in the camera, because then you don't spend time doing it in post like I'm doing now. So uh, it just keeps adding more, like it doesn't get rid of those last few hairs. So that's when I switch to a different tool, like the patch tool. I want a sharp edge, so I'm going to switch it from normal to content aware, and I'm just going to go ahead and move it. And now those hairs are gone. Now, I also don't like this little bulge here and on the back of his pocket. So we'll go to our filter menu. We'll come down to liquify, and we'll bring this up in liquify, and we'll just go ahead and push that in. Just not have that little bulge there. And last but not least, We'll push in this little back part here as well. 
There we go. And pull that out and, and make it and push in that little bump right there as well. And now we, we cleaned up Tony's suit. Just like that. And, you know, I've also flipped this button down because it's sticking up a little bit. Again, any little, you know, my mind went to it. So I would, I would do it in, in before. So that would just mean basically selecting it, duplicating it onto its own layer and rotating it so that it tilts down here. Let's just go ahead and do it. I can do it just as fast as it's taking me time to take me to explain it. Uh, so let's go ahead and select that area. Make a selection. Mac Command J, PC Control J, uh, Free Transform Command T, Control T, and just tilt it down and move it back a little. And that's going to leave uh, a little bit more jacket on there around it. So because that's on its own layer, you can feel free to use an eraser tool or masking and just mask off the pieces you don't need. So I don't need any of that. Need any of that? I don't know what that is. Is that part of this layer? Ah, it's part of the old layer. So let's go back to that. Oh, can't do that. Undo. It's not. It's not pure white. We'll just patch that out. Part of the uh, original button is still there. So I'm on the layer below and just patching out the original button. All right. So there we go. And now we got that button tilting down and not a distraction. So distractions are everywhere. They're everywhere we are. And if you, uh, my, my background didn't update, but if you look at my background, that line coming down my head, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So those are the kinds of things we typically want to get rid of are anything that's going to distract people away from your subject. So hopefully I gave you some good examples today. I gave you some good tools to do them with, whether you're in Lightroom, using that remove tool, cropping, or using Photoshop where you got a ton of tools and a ton of ways to do it, including generative fill while I'm using uh, generative AI and Firefly. You got the ability to do that as well. So just every photo you look at from now on, you're going to ask yourself, is there a distraction that I, sh I should or could remove? And if that's the case, you're going to go ahead and do it. So cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.